And with that, we welcome you to the Poker Go studio. This is the Global Poker Awards. Yeah, that was nice. Thank you for the round of applause right off the bat. That was beautiful. I'm Jeff Platt, thrilled to be back here alongside Drea Renee. We are hosting the show for you this evening. It is a show that does indeed celebrate the very best of what 2022 had to offer. I gotta say, 2022 was a pretty good year for me. I did win a couple poker tournaments. Don't mean to brag, but you can clap, yeah. <laughs> Not worthy of a huge round of applause. I mean, y'all could have done a, a little bit better than that, I guess. Um, my two wins last year gave me two more wins than the entire Only Friends podcast crew. <laughs> Where is Berkey? He's always late. He's always late. Unbelievable. We have a sharp start to 15 minutes. Great. Yeah, we'll save the Berkey bit for later. Good to see the Only Friends squad. Good to see so many wonderful invited guests. Somebody did basically pay about $135,000 for her seat, though. There she is. Let's hear it for Robbie J. Lou. Robbie is up for one of our Fans' Choice Awards this evening, Favorite Hand. The other nominees in that category, who cares? None of them are going to win. So. Another absolute superstar of the poker world is here. Let's say hello to Ethan Rampage. Yeah. Yeah, have a seat. Just, just have a live show to run, no big deal. I just have a seat. Get comfortable. Oh, no problem. Rampage is up for a few awards tonight. Let's see, we got Breakout Player, we have Best Vlogger, we have Poker Personality, we have Most Annoying Bad Beat Stories, kind of a given with Rampage. Uh, Rampage won the win WPT 25K for almost $1 million. How about that? You know, I, I watched your vlog on the tournament and I, I thought you played really well. I mean, you got a little lucky with the 9-8 versus the ace-queen, and the ace-4 versus the ace-nine, and the jack-8 versus the ace-nine. <laughs> but other than that, he crushed it. Thank you for being here, Rampage. <laughs> this table, just full of superstars, I think this one is the feature table, because not only does it have our 2022 GPI Player of the Year and Mid-Major Player of the Year, Stephen Song, it also has our GPI Female Player of the Year, Cherish Andrews. Let's hear it for both Stephen and Cherish. I mean, both absolutely crushed it last year. Cherish won more than $750,000. I feel like she and Brock are kind of rising up that poker power couples rankings. Maybe just behind the Foxins for that number one spot. We do have the 37th ranked couple here. Bob and Lexi, Gavin Mather, I believe, are here with us. Bob, and this is entirely on you. You got to pick it up in order to move up the rankings. You just have to. Should we get out there and talk to some people? Is that fine with y'all? Yeah, all right, all right, let's do, let's do just that. It's always a microphone that's just here, so let's go this way. Say hello to the Only Friends crew. Let's get it popping. We had a whole bit planned with Berkey and Melissa. Of course, they're late, just being honest with you guys. So if that's the case, let's jump over to the winner of the poker industry tournament yesterday. Now, if I were giving an award for best nine-way chop in a daily, I would give it to this man, Joe Stapleton. Joe, stand up for me, please. Let's hear it for Stapes. That's a line, yes. I don't have that trophy. Yeah. Well, hold on a second. It was, it was a nine-way chop, and I've never won enough money to make it rain, so I figured... Yeah, do it. Yeah, time. let's do it. There's, let's go! There's... Let's go, everybody! Enjoy! Just hit a couple Sorry, people in the head with pennies. Liz, let me, let me see this. You know, I do have an award for you, though. This is your best podcast award, and it's, it's from last year. So here you go. You. But why has it been here for like a year? Okay, so everyone's accused me of having left the award here, which I just mm. want to clear this up. I did not leave the award here. Okay. I went to the bathroom, and someone was very drunk. I'm not going to say who it was, but it rhymes with schmall schmamble. <laughs> and schmall schmamble took my award no. and left his behind. And I was like, well, why would I take his award? That doesn't make any sense. So here we are one year later. Uh, but I do, just in case, Paul, just in case things happen again, I got an Apple AirTag this time. <laughs> so I'm going to be able to track it down wherever it goes. Thank you very much for the time. Joe Stapleton, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> just so convenient, by the way, that you're sitting next to Boston Rob. Let's hear it for the Poker Go ambassador. Boston Rob, stand up for me, please. Now, really, the last time that you were in the studio, you won 
the Run right. Good Pro-Am. Yeah. You won the trophy. You won the ring. But what happened to the ring, like, 20 minutes later? Well, you know, as it is customary when you win a poker tournament, you take your friends out for drinks yeah. after. Yep. And I use the word friends loosely because, of course, you were there. <laughs> Unne <laughs> unnecessary comment. I went comment. over to the uh, lobby bar at Aria and was celebrating with my, my friend here, Mr. Tana Karn. Went to give him a high five, and the ring went spiraling <laughs> across the lobby of the bar. It was Christmas time, so the whole place was decked out, and literally within, what, 30 seconds, the entire lobby bar is looking for the ring. At one point, one of the women asked me, is it, is it worth a lot of money? And I told her, it's priceless. It's priceless. There we go. Uh, the one thing I took out of that story is that I'm friends with Boston Robin. Yeah. Just, just telling you guys that I'm friends. Uh, thank you for the time. And to get this show officially kicked off, let's send it to the president of GPI THM. No 14-minute speech this year. He still might cry, though. Mr. Eric Denis. Good news for Tim Duckworth. My voice is about to go, so this will be very, very fast. Um, I first just realized that I put my wife at a table with Stapes and Chicago Joey. Not the best of moves by me. A few thank yous before we start. Thank you, of course, to Poker Go. Uh, I, I'm so grateful to be partners with our friends at Poker Go. Of course, to Mr. Kerry Katz, to Maury, to Dan, uh, to Pat and Zach, uh, back, in, back in the booth running things. The entire team, Liz, and everyone on the floor. Uh, Jennifer has received about 50 or 70 awards. Uh, she's just been practicing, and thank you to everyone. I really, really do appreciate all the hard work and the effort, and of course, too, Mr. PGT Commissioner Tim Duckworth and to Brett Hanks for all their help and support. And to Remco, thank you from Arizona. The guest you promised me isn't here yet, so hoping he arrives very, very soon. So thank you to Poker Go. A big thanks to my team, in particular my good buddy Hans. Hans, it's three months of hell and we're almost done, buddy. So. Thank you to Hans, thank you to the team. You might notice that uh, a key member of our team isn't here, and that is Kevin Math, Kevin Mathers. Kevin, we love you. Can't wait to see you again. Kevin's a little under the weather, so I'm sure he'll be here uh, for the WSOP. He promised WSOP that he'll be back on his feet uh, in no time. So to Kev, we say hello. I mentioned my beautiful wife. She does so many of the things behind the scenes, so we thank her. A big thank you for everyone watching from home. We really appreciate all of your support. Best of luck to all the nominees. And as I said, my voice is about to, uh, to go. Oh, I'm Matt Savage. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights are playing tonight. I'll catch you out there by the second period. Enjoy NASCAR weekend and enjoy the Global Poker Awards. Thank you so much. And with that, let's talk players of the year. I'm proud to say that someone won two player of the year races. You know, people talk about our, our, our formula, our scoring system saying, it's, it's elitist, you know, but this year we proved one thing. Anyone, if they put their hearts into it, can win Player of the Year and make the most exciting races happen. I'm proud that both of our winners this year won at the very final event that they could win. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about uh, Cherish in right a few minutes, but for, for now, uh, we do have the man who made history for the first time in GPI history, winning two races, GPI Player of the Year and GPI Min-Major Player of the Year. Congratulations to Steven Song. America's Steven Song battled hard throughout the 2022 poker season to finally take the GPI POY lead for good, following his victory at the WPT Prime Championship at Win Las Vegas in one of the final major festivals of the season. Song's other win in 2022 was also at the win. His 2022 campaign included 43 results, two wins, 18 top 10 finishes, and a career best $2.28 million in winnings. Song's remarkable 2022 season helped him become the very first player in GPI history to capture two POY titles in the same year. GPI Player of the Year and GPI Mid-Major Player of the Year. Steven Song, GPI Mid-Major and GPI Poker Player of the Year.
first, I want to thank the staff at the ARIA for hosting the GPI Awards, as well as Eric and the GPI Committee for working so hard to promote and celebrate the game we all love. In an industry where you're taught to compete against everyone you come across, it's refreshing to come together as a community and celebrate each other's achievements. Poker has always been a passion of mine, and I'm so grateful to be able to play for a living. I definitely wouldn't be here if it weren't for the support of my family and them always rooting me on. I've been lucky enough to even have my parents both fly across the country just to watch me play. In 2019, my dad was able to watch me win my first WSB bracelet, and just recently, my mom was able to watch me win the WPT Prime Championship. I'm so blessed to have had them with me in such an important moment of my life, and for that, I owe them and poker everything. And all the friends I've met along the way. It's been awesome coming up together, growing, improving, and still playing. And without them, I just wouldn't be the player or the person I am today. And for that, I'm grateful. I've never been one to promote myself or, you know, want to be in the spotlight. But to be nominated at the top, it's just incredible. Even if all it really took was uh, sunning it in one tournament just to clutch the win. <laughs> Sorry, Adam Hendricks. <laughs> Honestly, I'm just happy I can enjoy this moment with all my friends and family. And really making my parents proud for trusting my crazy dreams. Also, thanks to the GPI Awards for uh, even having this uh, it gives my parents something to brag about to all their friends back home. <laughs> I mean, being able to say your son's the number one ranked player in the, you know, of the year, pretty sick brag. <laughs> um, anyways, thanks again for everyone working behind the scenes to put this all together, and good luck to all the nominees. Thank you. Congratulations, Stephen, a very well-deserved two victories. All right, this next race was tight down the stretch. Our winner sealed the deal after finishing on top of the leaderboard for the win. WPT World Championship Player of the Festival, this year's winner for GPI Female Player of the Year is Cherish Andrews. America's Cherish Andrews certainly had a flair for the dramatic late in 2022. Andrews capturing the female POY title from Angela Jordison seemed improbable. But a trio of brilliant performances at the WPT World Championship at Win Las Vegas, including a victory and a trio of top six finishes, helped her do just that capture the female POY crown at the very last moment. Andrew's 2022 poker season included 22 results, one victory, six top 10 finishes, and a career best $758,000 in winnings. Cherish Andrews, GPI Female Player of the Year. Okay, I'm just happy I didn't fall walking up here, but, and Steven, I have to follow you, so thanks for that. Um, I did not really prepare anything because it's me and nobody should be surprised about that. But I do want to start by thanking everybody behind the scenes in the industry that, you know, the tournament directors, floor staff, dealers, everybody at Henta Mob and GPI. Um, most importantly, I want to thank my parents who couldn't be here, but they are watching at home. I love you both very much. Um, without my parents last year, I would not have been able to do all the traveling with the game that I love. Um, they've really, I don't know why I'm getting emotional, but <laughs> they've really supported me along the way, the whole entire, my whole entire career. And when I told them in August of 2021, that I wanted to pursue tournaments seriously. They were right behind me, rooting me on, taking care of my little coconut. Um, they, I, I wouldn't be here without them. So thank you guys, I love you. Um, and also, Brock, 
my boyfriend, my little rail bird, the last year. <laughs> I would not be the tournament player that I am today without him. You've done so much for me. I love you. But. And also, I wanted to just say something to all of, us, all of the poker players. My mom said something to me a couple months ago that has really stuck with me. She said that she was proud of me for making poker my career and not my life. And I think that that's an important reminder for all of us that the most important thing that we have is at home, the friends and people that love us. And there's always going to be another poker tournament. There's always going to be somewhere to travel to go play. So go to the soccer game, go to the birthday party, go on the family vacation, because those are the moments we can't get back but there's always another tournament. And that's it. Thanks. Hear that under her breath. She said, take that, Jordison. It's a little, little mean. Three media categories for best content. Up first is the award for best written media content. And the award, of course, goes to Lance Bradley. And no, 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 not even nominated. OK, sorry, Lance. Here are the nominees. Media content written. Tim Fiorvanti for WPT.com. Connor Richards for PokerNews.com. Jennifer Shahadi for The Wall Street Journal. Robbie Straczynski for Card Player Lifestyle. And the winner is Jennifer Shahadi for the Wall Street Journal. Now, unfortunately, Jen couldn't be here tonight, but we happily accept this award on her behalf. All right, up next, it is the Fans' Choice Award for Best Trophy. Let us roll with the nominees. Fans' Choice, Best Trophy. EPT Main Event Trophy. PGT Stairway to Millions Trophy. WPA Women's Poker Association Trophy. WSOP Main Event Bracelet. And the winner for Best Trophy, the WSOP Main Event Bracelet. Wow, how's everybody doing tonight? You guys good? So the WSOP bracelet has a lot of depth to it. It's not just about the bracelet, which is a, magn a magnificent artifact in itself. Um, Jostens, the creator, the provider of the WSOP bracelets, backed by a team of some really, really smart people, put together the bracelet. Miron are Mutlu and Amanda Walker, and of course, in collaboration with my colleague Gregory Shoshan, who collaborated on the design, put together an amazing bracelet. The 2022 WSOP main, of brace, main event bracelet was created in 10 karat white and yellow gold. It featured diamonds, rubies, and black diamonds. A gold poker chip sits behind the bracelet, a removable piece that can be used as a card holder or place, right? It had 500 grams of 10 karat gold, total gem weight of 55 and a half carats, including rubies, 2,767 stones in total. It was worth more than $500,000 for the insurance company, 
but of course it was priceless for the 2022 world champion, Mr. Espen Jordstad. So congratulations to Espen for winning this gracious award. Thanks again to Jostens for creating it, and thanks for everyone for supporting the World Series of Poker. Thank you. Congrats to the WSOP. I, I love the Women's Poker Association trophy too, I'm just, just saying. <laughs> now before we get to our next award for the first time this evening, let us send it over to Dre Renee. Hey Dre. Hey Jeff, thank you so much. Hello everyone, so excited to be back here tonight for this special event. I am now joined by a man who really needs no introduction, but for the few of you that don't know, this is Daniel Jungle Man Cates, sometimes Macho Man. I thought we were gonna see an appearance tonight. What happened? Uh, well, I've got a few different uh, alter egos going on, so you know, it just depends on the day and the moment and all that. Uh, in the future, uh, be prepared to be, be uh, prepared for the unexpected. You're nominated tonight for best final table performance. Do you think you're going to take down the PPC three years in a row? Uh, yeah, someone's got to do it. <laughs> Is Macho Man going to do it? Uh, no, Macho Man's not going to do it. He's uh, timed out. Uh, he's tapping someone else in. <laughs> Who is he tapping in? Oh, I can't say that. That's no fun. <laughs> and what's this persona we got going on tonight? Uh, a little bit of Dan, a little bit of Macho Man. Uh, you know, even uh, Macho Man, uh, from what I saw in his interviews, would dress up on occasion. And even though he's like completely ridiculous, he was like, self-aware of himself. And still, uh, it at least seemed... A decent amount of the time, he had some good intentions and some good ideas, and he also cared about the kids, which is uh, also part of the real Dan. Um, maybe a part of this show as well, who knows? Uh, and he did dress on su in suits, believe it or not. So, yeah, well, I, I got to look good sometimes too. Got to look formal and right. and uh, good for TV and award places and whatever. And were you excited about coming in tonight? Yeah, it's. Uh, it looks like a good showing and um, feels prestigious. Well, thank you so much for your time. Hope to see Macho Man soon. All right. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Back to you, Jeff. Thank you. It looks like a good showing. We'll take it. That's from Jungle. I mean, like, you never know what you're going to get with Jungle. I'm happy to accept that. All right, time now for our second Fans' Choice Award of the evening. Fans were asked to vote for their favorite hand of 2022. Absolutely no suspense here, but roll the nominees anyway. Fans Choice, Best Hand. Daniel Negranu, runner runner quads on way to super high rollerball victory. David Diaz lays down monster on day seven of main event. Papo MC pulls monster bluff in WSOP main event. Robbie Jade Lou's Wild Jack 4 versus 9 8 hand. And the winner is. Hmm. <laughs> Robbie Jade Lou. You guys are probably just really sh looking forward to what I'm about to say, right? <laughs> I did not consult with my PR team about what to say, so get ready. Um, and the reason being because I just wanted to be natural. Uh, I have to say that the one thing that I probably will agree with in perfect poker vernacular is that I feel very polarized in receiving this award. And I know that there's many people in this audience that feel the same way. Um, but it is a fan's choice, so I thought about that when I came here, and I said, I, the, they were the ones that were there for me from the very beginning, when it was a very taxing time, and uh, I've said this on many podcasts, and I'll say it over and over again, they're the ones that kept me alive and get, kept me through this, and I never thought in a million years that I'd be standing here. Um, but the one thing I will say is that if there's any contribution I can make, it, it is probably to the other awards that will be given out tonight because of that hand. So you're welcome. Uh, you're welcome to the podcast for something to talk about because you guys were so effing bored. 
And uh, you're welcome. And there's Verky sitting there smiling at me because he knows what I'm talking about. And Joey out there and Caitlin Komsky, who does a wonderful impression of me as well. Um, and of course, somewhere out here, I saw Ryan, you're welcome. But I think that Hustler might have won regardless. Well, I'll give you that. Um, but I will say that the contribution in that regard, more so just my fans and the supporters around worldwide and my family, my husband, my friends, it makes it worth it to receive this. And uh, for those of you who are still playing Jack Four Off, and I, I continue to see the craziest hands, send them to me. Um, I commend you for winning and losing. I've, I've lost more than I've won since that hand happened. But it was a very internal, um, single-handed, impulsive, intuitive, call um, and here we are and it is the call that will I guess forever be received as the Robbie um, which I guess I can take but I did run it through a calculator for the first time today and I will say that it does have higher EV than seven deuce off so if you guys wanted to switch that game up I highly recommend it and I won't feel guilty anymore if you play it and you send me your results so in that regard thank you Thanks, Jeff. You're actually a really, really good speaker. Um, you know how to work the room beautifully. I'm impressed. Um, and I, I love that this just came out naturally for me. And I, uh, I've, what a controversially weird, awkward moment this is to receive this. <laughs> I'll never get over that. Um, thank you, of course, to Poker Go Studios and um, uh, Hand and Mob and GPI. Uh, thanks for having me. And uh, you will see a lot more of me. And I hope that those who have not met me um, finally do and realize that I'm better than what you perceive me to be from the very beginning if there's anything negative going on there. So I hope to be there for you guys. I appreciate this award. Um, thanks a lot. And may many more pots be won with Jack for off um, and a lot less pots lost. So appreciate you guys. Thank you. I've been on Robbie's side this whole time, by the way. <laughs> to present our next award, please welcome somebody who seems to be taking more and more sideline reporter jobs away from me. I'll act like it's fine, just like I did when Kara Scott came back. <laughs> Give it up for Natalie Bodie. Lucky for you, you are irreplaceable, Jeff. So I can't take that away from you. This award is presented to the organization who ran the best mid-major tournament events and festivals during the 2022 poker season. And the nominees are... Mid-major tour circuit. Mid-states poker tour. Run good poker series. WPT Prime WSOP Circuit And the winner is Can't get this envelope open You can tell it's my first one of these We'll just rip the corner There we go Wrong side too The winner is Run Good Poker Series <laughs> Excited to read this. Um, it's an honor to be out here, and of course, thank you, GPI and PokerGo, for everything you guys done for the industry, especially this night. It's awesome seeing everyone that's our movers and shakers all here under one roof. Uh, of course, uh, I don't. I think the bar is free, right? No, not anymore. Okay, not anymore. Sorry. Well, we'll do shots after this in the area. But regardless, guys, uh, you know, after the industry kind of came to a screeching halt in uh, 2021, or I should say 2020. Um, this trophy really does belong to every mid-major out there, uh, including the circuit, WPG Prime, MSPT. Um, you know, we are all kind of lost for a minute, um, and this past year has been an incredible amount of events for poker players. It's coming back, uh, I can't tell you how long the list was of everyone that was nominated under this category, and it's awesome to see everyone back in action. So really, it's, it's about the mid-major scene coming back, 
And I just want to say some quick things. I'd like to thank, of course, our team, our road team, our venue partners. Um, of course, you know, there's so much that goes into every stop that we just love giving out to players and making them have that lifetime experience. Whether or not you win or lose, you're going home with a smile. And uh, of course, I just want to thank my family for supporting me on this crazy adventure. Hi, Juniper at home. That's my daughter. She hopefully is in bed by now. And of course, last but not least, um, Haley, who's been with us forever on this crazy journey uh, for the Run Good Poker series. And uh, I usually like to end with a quote, so I'm going to read this off as, nobody's going to hit as hard as life, but it ain't how hard you can get hit. It's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. It's how much you can take and keep moving forward, because that's how winning is done. Michael Scott, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Buffalo. Uh, two of my favorite people right there. Right behind Robbie, of course. Berkey, you're very low on that favorite people list. All right, up next. Well, Spraggy won this next award last year, so he now has one live win. Here are the nominees for Best Streamer. Best Streamer. Kevin Martin. Benjamin Sprague. John Van Fleet. Lex Veldhaus. And the winner is my man, Kevin Martin. <laughs> now, Kevin could not be here tonight. Happily accept this award on his behalf. All right, up next is the award for best tournament director. Paul, if you win, take home the right trophy, please. <laughs> it's a note from Staves. Here are the nominees. Tournament Director, Paul Campbell. Ray Paulford. Matt Savage. Toby Stone. And the winner is Ray Pulford. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, everyone, for joining us this evening. I am humbled and honored to be standing here in front of all of you. Sorry if I get a little emotional. We pour our hearts and soul into poker at Win Poker. The real reason I'm standing here, though, is to accept this award for our staff, each and every one of our dealers, cashiers, the people that help us bring the events together. Our partners at WPT have been just unbelievable. I can't thank them enough. Please give WPT people a hand. We are here because of them. I have to say that having the support from our upper top brass, our executives, my boss Ryan, who gave me my position a few years ago, Andy, our operations manager. Thank you, everybody. Uh, the one thing I promised I would do is give a shout out to my wife and my daughter. Hi, girls. Charlotte, I love you. Mauricia, I love you so much, guys. Um, and then the last but not least, I just want to say thank you to the players. If you guys don't come out to support us, we don't have anything to do. I mean, <laughs> the players are the reason that we have events to put on. So thank you all for coming out to support each and every one of our events. Um, thank you.
winning the main, winning the most prestigious high roller, winning the biggest WPT prime, or winning the 50K back to back. Great competition. Here are the nominees for final table performance. Final table performance. Daniel Cates wins WSOP Poker Players Championship. Espen Ullen Jurstad, WSOP Main Event. Daniel Negranu, PGT Super High Roller Bowl 7. Steven Song, WPT Prime Championship. And the winner is Dan Cates, Jungle Man. All right, well, it turns out I wanted um, to have more public speaking opportunities. <laughs> So, this is actually kind of convenient. I didn't think of this. Uh, it's a bit of a story how this situation came about where Macho Man Dan came, uh, was summoned in order to w redefend, uh, well, my, tit my title the, from the previous year in 2022. But a big part of that was, you know, once upon a time, I was quite an aloof poker player. I didn't really care too much about a lot of things. And I just cared about winning at poker. But as life went on and more and more experiences happened to me, I started to see the reasons for caring about other sorts of things beyond poker in all kinds of different dimensions, in ways of giving back and treating people better and treating people the way you would like to be treated. And I started to see how you know, the actions that you take end up coming back to you more and more in all kinds of different ways. And even as I started having more and more dreams beyond poker, I also saw that, well, wh why don't I make a difference in the, the career, the field that I wanted to make a difference in? Uh, or that gave me everything that I had, which is poker. Uh, makes sense, right? Um, and I started realizing all these ways in which poker could be made a better experience for everyone as well. And one of those ways was that, you know, I was playing tournaments all the time and I was feeling, wow, I'm like kind of bored. Uh, I'm, you know, playing short stack Hold'em isn't my idea by itself. I mean, there's good things about it, but I wanted to spice things up a little bit, have a little fun with it myself. Uh, so that's the short version of how somehow I ended up in some ridiculous outfits and putting on some crazy semantics. But the bottom line is, while this game is very enjoyable for those who are diehard poker fans and really see the competitive value and like how it's like competitive, like chess in many ways to win, I think it's really important to consider the viewers and consider the recreational players that play. Like what's in it for them really when you think about it and what's gonna get them to come back more and more? You know, in business, your ability to continue your business is dependent on are people going to come back and buy your, buy your product? It's the same thing. And so, you know, if a recreational poker player feels like he's playing all these geniuses and people who knows, people who know all the math and, you know, they're up against supercomputers in human form, why are they going to come back? And if people are watching or watching poker, and all there is is the competitive value of it, what are they watching for if that's all they're into it, into for? So I decided, you know what, let's make this fun. It really came from, I just wanted to have more fun. And I think that even though it's a difficult task to make poker more entertaining, it's absolutely possible. And that even though it is difficult and a bit far away to reach out to a wider audience, I think this is one of the steps towards, you know, even potentially another poker boom. And the upsides are maybe even as great or greater than the, the, the 
the effort that's required to put in. And I hope to see it become more and more entertaining. And I think it can to appeal to that side of us that really wants to have fun, you know, as much as we can. And and uh, yeah, let's just make it happen. I uh, I also just on that note, it's also important to remember to you know be friendly and nice to your recreational players and make sure they're treated nice, you know, with respect and all that. Some poker players forget that. It's, uh, yeah, let's let's make sure there's in it, something in it for a lot of people. Thank you. All right. Uh, last year's PPC was like 18 hours long, and it's like, oh. oh. <laughs> All right, let's send it once more to our Drea Renee. Drea. Thank you, Jeff. I am now joined by Run Good founder and nominee tonight, Tana Karn. Tana, congrats on your win. You've obviously seen some major success here at the GPI Awards, and tonight you're nominated for Industry Person of the Year. Talk to me about what it means to be included in such an elite group of poker heavyweights. Oh, it's, it's incredible, and uh, I mean, I, I can't even begin to explain how, I mean, David and Goliath this is. I mean, I looked up to these guys uh, that I'm nominated with my you know, entire poker career, uh, starting when I was playing in high school. So. I'm just excited to be here. And I saw there was a big announcement this week for Run Good Poker with Hinden Mob. Talk to us about that. Yeah, uh, so we are teaming up with GPI and THM over at uh, Thunder Valley at Ben Irwin's house slash crib. Um, and we're really excited. It's their first time being stateside um, when we're doing the Hinden Mob Mid-Major Championship 500K guarantee. So it's going to be a, a big deal, and it's going to be right after the World Series of Poker. Congratulations. And last question, I follow you on Twitter. What's this obsession with the Buffalo slots? I mean, is that where we're going to find you after the Poker Awards? I'm just curious. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, congratulations. Back to you, Jeff. Yeah, nobody happier. Nobody happier that Tana is here than his casino hosts this week. All right, our next award is for Player's Choice Toughest Opponent. Here to present, Player's Choice for Easiest Opponent, Ethan Rampage Yao. So, thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. So, uh, I'd like, I don't get to do this often, but I am above average height, and I'd like to just bring this up a little bit, just so <laughs> we're both clear where we're both at. <clears throat> Anyways, <laughs> our next award for player's choice, toughest opponent. Oh, that's me. I'm reading what, I'm, what he already said. And then, oh, <laughs> nobody happier than Tan. Oh. <laughs> And the nominees are, yeah. Player's Choice. Brian Altman. Stephen Chidwick. Alex Foxen. Stephen Song. So for the player that I'd like to least play with and see at my table, <laughs> oh God, Stephen Shidwick. <laughs> so he's not here, unfortunately, to accept it. Luckily, I am. So thank you to Stephen for not being here. I will take this home, and you can uh, take it whenever you want. But thank you. <laughs> Are you friends with Steven? Yeah. yeah all right. <laughs> Can nobody look? There we go. We also, it's perfect timing to acknowledge this trophy. Roland, let's bring this bad boy up here. Steven Chidwick was also named the 2022 PGT Player of the Year. Six wins, 32 caches, more than $6.3 million in earnings on the Pokero Tour. Yeah. I'll hand this off to my good friend Stephen myself when we see him for the U.S. Poker Open. All right, rolling it here you go. I'm actually really intimidated by Stephen Chinwick. I don't think he considers us friends, so maybe it's better that, that Roland has it. 
All right, nothing more to say for our next award except these are four incredible photos from four incredible photographers. Here are the nominees for best photo. Media content, photo. Antonio Abrego for Poker Go. <laughs> Hayley Hawkstetler for Poker News WSOP. Alec Rome for Poker News WSOP. Spencer Sembrat for Poker News WSOP. And the winner is. Ocho, Haley Hatchteller. I almost tripped over a pile of pennies over there. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> oh, I had something to say, but I didn't bring my notes up here with me, and I think my photos do a lot more speaking than my words do. So um, thank you to the Hendon Mob and GPI for presenting these awards to our industry. It's really important to recognize the people that make poker such a great place to work and to, to be in. And uh, I wanted to thank my dad for coming out here and being So, thank you. <laughs> Our next presenter won Best Industry Person last year, and right before the winner was announced, his wife was so confident in his chances that she went to the bar. <laughs> Here's Matt Savage. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, about. Uh, what, two months ago I told Eric, I said, hey, if you want me to announce that, I'll do it because I wasn't uh, nominated, so I was happy to do it, but he forgot to tell me that I was going to be doing this. But thanks, Eric. Uh, I would like to thank the uh, GPI THM for hosting this uh, uh, fantastic night every year. It's always great. And so Industry Person of the Year, here are the nominees. Industry Person. Ryan Beauregard. Jack Effel. Maury Escandani. Tana Khan. What a great group here, and the winner is. Jack Eppel. Should have won last year. Uh, well, surprising, I don't have a speech. I just want to start off and I just want to thank, um, well, first I'd like to thank Eric Denny for putting together these uh, great awards for everyone and finally getting the algorithm right for uh, some of these categories. <laughs> but no, on the, on the serious side, um, I'd like to give a heartfelt thank you to everyone in the industry, because th that's what this is really all about. The, the industry award is about doing your best every single day. It's about working hard. It's about putting together the, the best poker product that you can for everyone to play poker. And during the World Series of Poker, you know, there's a lot of poker going on. I mean, we're, we're really busy between the two properties, Paris and um, now Horseshoe, formerly Bally's. And uh, but everyone, you know, throughout the, the summer puts together great events, the win. They put together an amazing event this year. I mean, I, I'll applaud them. What an amazing event they, those guys had. <laughs> Competition is okay. You know, at the end of the day, we want everyone to have, you know, a great poker product. And the World Series of Poker, it's very special. 
um, to everyone. I mean, it's about winning the WSOP bracelet. It's about competing at the highest level. It's about having an opportunity to win life-changing money. It's about being able to be on, on TV and, you know, make, make a, uh, you know, personality of yourself. Maury Escondani, you know, great uh, producer of all of our WSOP poker shows. <laughs> Simply amazing in what he does. And, and obviously one of the masterminds behind the, the great Poker Go studio that uh, we're in here tonight, um, you know, just really just kills it every single day. And, you know, we think about, you know, the best industry person. I, I don't think about anything that, that I've done. I, I really think about what we've done collectively together, not only as an industry, but, you know, as a team. Um, you know, there's a few of us that I think that are important to, to point out in, in the midst of all of this. Um, number one is Ty Stewart. Um, Ty Stewart is my boss, my friend for, for nearly 18 years in, in doing this job, and just truly one of the most brilliant poker minds uh, and business guys that I've ever had the honor of working side by side. Gregory Shoshan, who's here with me tonight. Just an unbelievable person and um, somebody I work with very closely and uh, just does a great job. And, you know, there's only a handful of people that, um, you know, pull some of the, the major strings, but it really takes an army for World Series of Poker. But I still want to point out some of these individuals because it's important. We got Brad Harwood here tonight. Brad Harwood is our director of PR. He, he's been with us for a little over a year, two WSOPs under his belt, but he does a great job and he's been very friendly with the media and, and we really uh, think he's a great partner. We've got Tyler Peipel, who's here. He's my operations manager. There's something famous. If you've ever had a problem with the World Series of Poker, you go and get in the Tyler line. You know, Tyler has a, an amazing amount of responsibilities, you know, throughout the year and during the summer. He probably gets more pressure put on him than just about anyone. Uh, but, he, but he does a great job. I, I want to give a shout out to a few people that, that are not here um, that I think are, are deserving. Dennis Jones. You guys know Dennis Jones? A nice round of applause for Dennis. <laughs> Dennis is out. You know, I think he's on a little bit of a break, but he just did four circuit events in a row, did a, did a great job. And, um, you know, I'm very proud of, you know, what everyone's doing with the World Series of Poker, whether it be during the summer, during the circuit events. World Series of Poker Europe, we have Carapet here from King's Casino. He's here from the Czech Republic. <laughs> King's does an amazing job. If you've never had a chance to go play for a bracelet in Razadov, you should do that, that's, that's great. But you know, really what this all comes down to is that you know, it's about the people, it's about the poker, uh, and there's so many people that we can thank. And you know, look, there, there have been some speeches tonight where you thank the staff, the dealers, the cashiers, the, the, the folks that are really working hard, that, you know, the unsung heroes that make sure that you get your, your, your correct ticket, that you get to your table, that the cards get dealt. They, didn't, they deal you the winners, they deal you the losers, they pay you the, the life-changing money, they deliver the bracelet. We're all part of the industry. So, um, you know, I accept this award tonight on behalf of the entire WSOP team and uh, my hat's off to everyone in the industry. Thank you for recognizing me and for recognizing us and, and what we do. And I can assure you that we will be hard at work continuing to deliver the best poker that we possibly can. So thanks everyone. Enjoy the rest of the night and thanks to GPI for having this, this great award. So thank you very much. One, one nice round of applause for Jeff Platt, because he might be the best that I've ever seen in uh, being a host. Probably say passion for the game, passion for broadcasting. It's my go-to line, all the interviews I do. <laughs> Well, I've just always had a passion for the game, for poker, and I've always had a passion for broadcasting. Don't mean to brag, I've been pretty good at it throughout the years. So when I was in between jobs in 2018, I jumped at this opportunity here, and I've been, I've been pretty fortunate ever since. I actually have been to meet him personally. Somebody sent me an audition tape, and as soon as I saw it, I knew we had 
somebody special. And uh, although we didn't have any open position in them, but we were gonna open one for him. So I met Jeff back in 2018. We started doing a few shows together and right away. Uh, it was more than just broadcast partners. We became friends quickly. My family loves him. My wife loves him. My wife loves him. My kids, they call him Uncle Jeff. Uh, I know his family. It's, uh, we're friends for life. It's beyond just work. I get a little embarrassed when people call me the, the nicest guy in poker. You know, I'm just, I'm just Jeff. I'm just, I'm just my authentic self. All right, you guys need anything else? I think we've talked to everyone we wanted to, except Len, your personal assistant. We're meeting him tomorrow. You're, you're talking to Len? I, I don't really think that's necessary for, for this speech. I'm Len Budlow. I've been Jeff's personal assistant for about three years now. Tell me what it's been like working. I'm just trying to think of something nicer to say than pure psychological torture. You guys spend a lot of time together, don't you? Uh, no, no reason. You know, I just, I just thought this was going to be about my professional life. Psychological torture, that's shocking. Everyone else we've talked to has had such nice things to say about Jeff. The other day I brought him a straw for his Monster Energy drink and they didn't have a plastic bendy straw like Jeff likes, so I brought him a paper straw, and he, he made me eat the straw. Paper straw. Paper straw. You know I can't bend a paper straw, right? Jeff needs his bendy straw. I'm sorry, sir, but you know how it is with the paper straws. We're trying to save the sea turtles. I fucking hate sea turtles. Nobody should care about turtles. Who hates turtles? You're a monster. Paper straw for breakfast. <laughs> well, I mean, Paper straws do suck. I just thought a belly full of paper straws would be a nice reminder that Jeff only uses bendy straws. We were on the road and I, I ran out of contacts, so I had to wear my glasses. So I, I came to work with my glasses on and Jeff said I couldn't wear them because Jeff can't be seen with a fucking nerd. kept leading me into walls. I, I accidentally walked off a bridge. Oh, come on, I mean, that was hilarious. The bridge wasn't even that high. He was out of the hospital in like two, three weeks tops. I, I can't be seen with nerds in the wild. Jeff has a reputation to uphold. My mom came to town a couple weeks ago. We finally got a reservation at Carbone. We've been talking about going there for years, so I was really excited. But that same day, the Dallas Mavericks traded for Kyrie Irving, and Jeff was furious said I wasn't allowed to leave for dinner until I did something about it. <sighs> Hi, yeah, NBA.com customer service? Hi, yeah, I was hoping I could talk to someone about the Dallas Mavericks recent trade for Kyrie Irving. Yeah, we were hoping we could dispute it or something. I have dinner in 20 minutes. What are we doing here? Not until this gets fixed. I know you had something to do with it. <laughs> Hello? Y yeah, I'll hold. Thanks. Look, there's just no way the Mavs would have traded for Kyrie if Len hadn't put them up to it. I mean, he's a Spurs fan, for Christ's sake. I, I really need this job, but I don't know how much more of this I can take. Hey, what the hell is going on with the eggs? I told you I want them to be bussin', like Landon makes. <laughs> Look, I know this is going to be a controversial take, but the eggs that Landon posts on his IG story aren't even cooked. You're going to get sick. I get it, because I don't have a podcast with Berkey that I can't be as good as Landon. Is that it? I never said that. I just don't want you to get salmonella. I just want to be like Landon. Oh. He's one of the nicest guy, and everyone is uh, truly happy to work with him. He's easy to work with. Jeff, you deserve all the praise. You deserve all of the accolades. I'm honored to be your broadcast partner, and I hope we get to do this for many years to come. Jeff is a great boss. It's so rare to work for someone so... I'm not reading this. Read it. It's rare to work with someone so attractive, talented, and tall. I thought you were like 5'8". I'm 5'10". Oh, nice patch, is that for the show? Jeff makes me wear it all the time, even when I'm asleep. That's funny. He seems like the nicest guy.
Wish we hadn't aired that. Here to present an award that honors the best vloggers who grow the game and reach an international audience is a dear friend of mine, is an incredible person, is a great assistant. He threatened to sue me if I didn't let him present an award. Here's Len Budlow. Uh, I'll make this quick. Uh, Jeff wanted 87 peeled grapes for his after show snack, and I've only gotten through six. Patch! Thanks. So I, I got some work to do. Uh, here are the nominations for Best Vlogger. Best Vlogger. Jamin Burton. Mariano Grandoli. Brad Owen. Ethan Yao. And the winner is... Rampage! Awesome. Appreciate uh, GPI and everyone just recognizing this even being part of the industry. I mean, like, how tilting is it for the poker players that I've sucked out on? Every time the pot gets pushed my way, my stupid little phone is, like, can't recording you walking out and the chips coming my way. It's great. So thanks for even recognizing this award and this little sector of poker and this little niche space that we're in. So um, it means a lot. First thing I want to thank is my buddy Carl, who's kind of like the silent partner of the Rampage channel. <clears throat> Editor, manager, I don't know, keeps me uh, honest and actually working, which is nice because I have to pay you, so the money has to come somewhere. It all goes to Carl, really. But yeah, big thank you to Carl. I mean, he, I wouldn't be here without him for sure and all the people that watch the poker videos on YouTube. It means a lot. I mean, if it wasn't for you guys watching and I wouldn't have this award and I'd just be some rando and weird kid recording myself talking about poker. So thanks for making me not a weird person, but it means a lot. Um, there's a lot of people to thank. Nicole is a very supportive girlfriend and uh, this means a lot. And also like the founding fathers of this like poker industry, Jamin who's here, Brad, Andrew, Johnny Vibes, you four. <laughs> You four were like huge inspirations for me a couple years ago and a big influence of like the hundreds of people that make videos now on YouTube. So it's great to watch this little niche space that you guys grew and I can be a part of it. So I'm grateful for that and all the people that I've met. So um, thanks, this means a lot. So thanks guys. Congratulations Rampage. All right, time once again, head out to the floor. Let's check in with Drea Renee. Hey Drea. Hey, Jeff, thank you so much. I am now joined by Breakout Player of the Year nominee, Angela Jordison. Angela, congrats on all of your success. You look amazing. Talk to us about what this past year has been like for you. It's been very different um, than anything I've done in poker before because I never thought I would be traveling from coast to coast grinding tournaments. I've always been a cash game player, so this just never seemed in the cards for me. Um, but I had the best year, met the most amazing people, and. I left it all on the felt. You're so passionate about the game and you're obviously putting in the hard work. What did it mean to you to be nominated tonight? I was really excited when I, I didn't even realize I was in the mix for player of the year until like August. And my friend Jackie said, let's go for it. Let's just at least get invited to the party. So um, I've gotten really good at second place, but at least I'm still at the party. Yeah. Right, and if you take home that trophy tonight, who's the first person you're gonna call? That's a good question. <laughs> My son and daughter probably, yeah. Well, congratulations on all your success and good luck tonight. Thank you, thanks. Back to you, Drea. All right, thank you, Angela. Thank you, Drea. This next award is presented to the person that produced the best video content in the industry. Finishing just outside the final four, Ali Najad for his 46 Instagram stories of him flying in first class. <laughs> Here are the nominees. 
Media content, video. Caitlin Komeski. Joey Ingram. Gregory Liao. Marley Sprague. And the winner is Greg goes all in. Now, Greg cannot be here tonight. We happily accept this award on his behalf. And major shout out to Caitlin and to Joey for being here. And Joey streamed for like three weeks straight, 18 hours a day. So round of applause for those two. Caitlin did a two minute video after that. It's the same thing. Speaking of incredible content, how about the run for Gabe Kaplan on High Stakes Poker, huh? Now, before we present him with the Poker Icon Award, let us take a look back at his first on-camera appearance on the show. Here's season one, episode one. I'm joined by my co-host and poker expert, Gabe Kaplan. Now, Gabe, we're going to see some of the best, toughest poker plays in the world out there tonight, aren't we? That's right, AJ. A lot of these plays we've already seen in the tournaments, but very few of the tournament players play in this level of cash game. Why? Why is that? Well, in a tournament, there's a limit to what you can lose. You can only lose your buy-in. Right. Here, if you lose $50,000 in a pot, that's $50,000 <laughs> that comes right out of your pocket. Okay. Now, you might think emotions are going to run high because of that, but I don't think so. These players are consummate gamblers. They don't wear their emotions on their sleeves. Mm. I think we're going to hear a lot of stories, a lot of jokes. These people are masters of deception. Right. One thing you can be sure of. The money they're playing for is real. It's their own money. It's coming right out of their pocket. And you've never seen it before on television. This is the first time cameras have been inside this kind of cash game. Yes, it is. Didn't know the camera's like, whoa, OK, sorry. Uh, absolutely iconic lines. And to officially present the Poker Icon Award, here's Poker Hall of Famer and Poker Girl President, Maury Escandani. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I can go on talking so much about the voice over sessions with Gabe Kaplan, the ones that didn't make the cut because uh, it was a little, <laughs> Gabe took it to a different level, and networks will take it out. But I'll sum it up over 10 seasons of high stakes poker and voice with Gabe was 90% laughter. 10% work. When inside the room, if he had a hidden camera, uh, his, his genius at the moment, nothing scripted, will watch. Of course, he would know many of the players. He had a lot of experience playing with them or knowing them, a lot of inside information. He would always have exactly the right thing to say. And uh, it's too bad that he couldn't be here today, but uh, we spoke and he had a message for all of you. So we'd like to play it. I'd like to thank all my friends, old and new, at the GPI Awards for the Poker Icon Award. I looked up icon in the dictionary, and it said old person. <laughs> Actually, this is only the second award I've ever received in my life. Both were in Vegas. First one was almost 50 years ago, 1974, right after I retired from being an opening act a month later, they gave me the opening act of the year award. Now I retire from poker announcing, and I get the poker icon award. If I retired from everything years ago, I'd have a lot of awards right now. Wish I could have been there with you tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, one and only Gabe Kaplan. Thank you so much, Maury. All right, up next is the Fans' Choice Award for Favorite Live Stream. Now, if you watch the excellent coverage of the PCA and the PSPC, you saw poker stars. Hey, please vote, please vote, please vote. 
And then I think they realized there was another round of voting. They're like, ah, screw this. Here are the nominees for Fave Livestream. Fans' choice. Fave Livestream. EPT Live. Hustler Casino Live. King's Casino Livestream. Poker at the Lodge. And the winner is Hustler Casino Live. Pretty cool, thank you. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Thank you, uh, Hand and Mob, GPI, Poker Go, much appreciated. Uh, a few years ago, Nick and I had a dream and a vision for wanting to put together the best poker live stream, and now we are here today accepting this award. It's really cool, and it's an amazing honor um, for us. We've put in a lot of work in this, and we really love poker. And um, you know, we've only scratched the surface. We have. A lot more that we want to accomplish in the next few years or however long it is. Um, we have big things we're working on and we're really excited. Uh, we want to thank, first of all, Sean Yapel, who's the Hustler Casino GM. He believed in us and he gave us an opportunity to put this together. Um, me personally, I want to thank Nick Fertucci uh, as much as anyone. Um, I went to him and said, hey, what do you think about this idea? We talked about it, we drew it out, and now we are here today and I can't, I, me personally, I couldn't do it without Nick. And so I think we're the, the perfect team in being able to put together the business and production and being able to, uh, to give the fans what they want. Um, we want to thank our production staff. Um, there's been people that are no longer with us, people that are with us now. Um, we really like, couldn't do this without our production staff. Of course, the players. We have the coolest group of core players um, that have been with us from day one and, and play with us consistently, and we really appreciate it. It really is like a family. We recently did a meetup game at Hustler uh, last week, and it was the coolest thing ever. We had hundreds of people that flew in and played, and um, our players that play high stakes came and played and, and played a 2-3 game just to support and, and so that they could give the fans what they want, and it was the coolest thing ever. So. We want to thank our players. We want to thank all of our fans, everyone that voted, um, everyone that watches our show daily. Um, we're not what we are without all of those people. So thank you so much. It's such an honor to accept this award. And we just love poker. And we're excited to, to keep improving and keep bringing you guys the, the best poker live stream. Uh, and then I think Nick wants to say something. Sure. Yeah. Why not? So yeah. thanks, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, like Ryan said, Two years ago, this was an idea. When you came to me, we talked about it, and we said, let's go out there and build the number one live stream. We really felt we could do it. We brought it to probably four or five, four or five casinos. I, I put together a business plan. We brought it. A lot of them didn't see it, and we kept telling them, I promise you, we're going to build the best live stream. Give us a chance. And Sean Yapel from Hustler contacted Ryan proactively and said, why haven't you come here? And I told Ryan, I said, I've never been to the Hustler. I don't even know where it is. And uh, we went, and within a couple hours, we knew we were going to work together. And within a few weeks or a month, we signed a two-year agreement. We want to thank the Flints, the late Larry Flint. Uh, it was his dream to have a white chip game, if you could believe that, at his casino. And now he's got a chocolate chip game that we ran out of chocolate chips for uh, our stream, which are the 5K chips. And so Mrs. Flint, if you're out there, thank you. We appreciate it. Sean, same thing. And let me say this, this guy, is the best in the business at what he does. The best, let's give him a hand. Yeah, so thanks man, it's been, it's been an awesome ride. Bro. All right, thank you very much. Thanks guys. And also thanks to Robbie for that hand that gave us all the views, yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, we want to take a minute to acknowledge our winners of awards handed out earlier today. Best Twitter personality, Will Jaffe. Yeah, dang, let's get it done. Comeback player, Phil Ivey. Weird that he's not here. He's, he's very excited to accept. Charitable Initiative, the Star Entertainment Group in Australia for hosting the Shane Warren Perpetual Trophy One Dare and raising funds for the Corumban Wildlife Hospital in honor of the cricket legend. Let's hear it for Star. <laughs> Tournament operators last year put on some of the most impressive events that this game has ever seen, and the poker world has benefited from it. In fact, one of the tours had their commentator bubble the world championship event. I mean, that's just like next level giving back to the community. Here are the nominees for best event. Best event. EPT Barcelona main event. Triton Poker Coin Rivet Invitational. World Series of Poker Main Event. WPT World Championship at Win Las Vegas. And the winner is... the WPT World Championship at Win Las Vegas. Last time I was up here, I gave a small speech for Angelica Hale that went on for so long, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep this one short. Uh, but uh, I, I, first of all, I just want to say thank you to an incredible partner at Wynn. I, I mean, from the very beginning, uh, the amount of focus and dedication and commitment, uh, this man right here is um, I'm sure looking at his phone right now because he's worried about the next, uh, the next event, but he is a magician. I mean, his concern and his care for the players and the experience and has been an amazing representative of an incredible organization. And Ray, uh, I told Matt if he won, he's fired. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ray did an, a, an amazing, amazing job. Uh, you know, quite frankly, it was far beyond what we ever expected as well. Um, I was uh, sweating a little bit of a guarantee, and then um, I appreciate everybody for making sure that that didn't happen. But uh, <laughs> I, I want to say uh, thank you to WPT Global. Uh, it's been our dream for a World Poker Tour event to have qualifiers. So uh, thank you uh, for sending online qualifiers. And this has been a group effort for the World Poker Tour. Uh, everybody up here, um, I mentioned uh, Angelica Hale, who runs Global Tour Management. Uh, if you haven't heard me say enough good things, go back to the Women in Poker Hall of Fame speech and listen to her. Listen to that. Um, uh, but everyone on the World Poker Tour came together. And this was an effort. Uh, you know, Lance and his team brought in 30 media. Uh, 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 Matt, the, uh, Club WPT sent 50 qualifiers uh, 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 to, to the event. Um, everybody in the entire company got around this and was dedicated to this. And I'm just so proud. You know, when I first uh, started at World Poker Tour, uh, I was in my last days of my 20s. And now I'm in the early days of my 50s. And I've uh, got to work with the most incredible people. And I am truly honored by that. And what they've done to make this happen is a credit to the World Poker Tour and a credit to themselves. So thank you all for uh, what you've done. Please give them a round of applause, because they do all the work. Um, and then finally, and most importantly, um, it was a 20-year anniversary for World Poker Tour. And um, this we got together as a company and we said, what do we want the theme to be? And it 
the entire theme was to say thank you to the players. Because you have shown up and you have supported us, yes, in good times when we've had, when we've had money, you showed up when we didn't. Uh, and uh, you know, I will tell you, I think the best compliment that I received over the, uh, uh, over the entire time was, um, you know, somebody said, the World Poker Tour doesn't always hit a home run, but we can tell you tried, and that matters to us. And that mattered to all of us here. Thank you so much, players. We love you, we appreciate you, and we're gonna keep trying, and we're gonna keep trying. We're not always gonna hit it, but we, we love you, so thank you. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan, who had so much uh, to do with all that happened. Thanks, Adam. Um, to his point, I, I think we hit it out of the park this time. Um, you know, in my mind, there, there's three things that make for a spectacular event. Um, one is the promotion of the event. Uh, the second part is the execution. And the third is the support from the players. And I don't think, uh, to Adam's point, we feel the same way. We could have never expected the level of promotion and commitment that the WPT brought to this event, especially in year number one. And I only look forward to where it's going in year number two. You know, as far as the execution, our staff, Ray, Andy, the entire Win Poker staff, the dedication that they have to our poker room 365 days a year, whether it's a $200 daily or a, or a $10,000 world championship, it's, it's unwavered and um, they deserve all the credit, right? It takes, it takes the whole crowd. And uh, finally, to the players, you know, and as Ray said in his speech earlier, you know, without you guys and without the players, um, it, it wouldn't have been as special and it was special and we really look forward to you know what it's going to be next year so thank you so much this year this year yeah correct this year we're in we're in 2023 so thank you good thank you Congratulations to the win, congratulations to the World Poker Tour. In 2022, we had to say goodbye to some vital members of the poker community. Let's take a moment now to pay tribute to those that we've lost. Thank you to GPI THM for putting together that touching tribute. Last year's GPI breakout player, Johan Guibert. We asked him to present this year's award. He's still in the tank, so I will take care of it. Here are the nominees for breakout player of the year. 
GPI breakout player, Angela Jordison. Ethan Erlen Jorstad. Alejandro Lococo. Punat Punzri. Ethan Yao. And the winner is. Angela Jordison. Well, I don't have anything really prepared because I didn't think I was going to win. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to wing it. Um, like I said, I have spent the last 15 years in my corner of the country playing PLO cash games. So I never expected to be grinding tournaments, chasing GPI points, getting so competitive with a race I never expected to be in. It was my greatest year in poker. I had so much fun. I met the most amazing people, made great friends. I mean, I hope I can do it again. Um, but I need to thank the people that support me so much. And I can, I'm going to start with my love, my family. They always believe in me. They think I'm the best ever. And, you know, I want to keep them thinking that. Um, I want to thank my coach, Faraz Jaka. He called me out when I would make mistakes. And he was also so supportive and my biggest cheerleader on every success. And I need to thank my ride or die bestie, Jackie. She's, she's the best hype girl in the business. Nobody can be a better hype girl than her. And I recommend that all of you guys find yourself your own Jackie, because she's great. Um, I saved this last this part for last, because I actually wasn't even sure I could talk about it. But I want to try. I lost my dad to cancer at the end of 2020. I played poker with my dad. We played tournaments together. We played cash together. We played heads up on the coffee table. And we even played poker while he was receiving his chemo at MD Anderson. He was the funniest person alive, and he made poker fun. Um, the day before he died, I was by his hospice bed, and I was just like talking and talking and kind of having the moments go by. He was not awake. He really hadn't been awake that whole day. And at one point, I started to talk about poker. And I would talk about talking stick, where he played multiple days a week. And then I said to him, Dad, I said to him, Dad, I'm going to win something big for you. And in my way, I feel like this fulfilled that promise to him. And I know how proud he would be of me. And I just really want to thank Eric and the GPI and the Hendon Mob for putting this on and making this award possible. So thank you.
Such a beautiful tribute, Angela. Thank you so much for that. As I've been doing with all of these awards, I announce who won it last year, Best Broadcaster, Jeff Platt. <laughs> to present this year, here's Above the Felt and Faded Spade boss man, Tom Wheaton. Thank you, Jeff. And a heartwarming story as a dad to a daughter, I <clears throat> need to catch a breath, but um, heartwarming story. Uh, best broadcaster, all four of the nominees are absolutely best in class, but I feel like we have to click it back a little bit for Jeff, so here's the deal. If somehow, some way, Jeff actually wins this thing again, I will be presenting the award to Brent Hanks. <laughs> the nominees are. Broadcaster. James Hartigan. Jamie Kerstetter. Jeff Platt. Nick Shulman. All right, and the winner. This is like a mystery bounty envelope. You wouldn't know what that's like, right? <laughs> James Hardigan, come on up, man. Um. Like everyone else this evening, I didn't prepare any words because I figured if you're worthy of winning Best Broadcast, you should be able to ad-lib something. That was before I had three gin and tonics. <laughs> um, I have to say, I think Joe Stapleton is more excited about this than I am. And obviously, I have to thank Joe because throughout this whole process of the nominations, Joe was my hype man, my PR manager, my campaign manager. So thank you, Joe, for alerting North America to the fact that there is poker being played and content produced the other side of the Atlantic. Um, and obviously, I have to thank Joe because he has been my on-air partner of the last decade and a bit, more than 10 years. And um, I know Eric and the GPI absolutely love it when I always point out ways that they could improve these awards. Uh, and I'm sure that my fellow nominees, Jeff, Nick, and Jamie, all equally deserving of this, by the way, will agree with me when I say that you can't do it alone and you have to be part of a broadcast team. And I do genuinely believe that the award should recognize a team of broadcasters because I'm nothing without Joe, I'm nothing without the rest of our broadcast team on the EPT, Nick Walsh, Maria Ho, Griffin Benger, Sam Grafton, um, and also the other people who need to be recognized are of course our stellar best in class production team, all the guys watching back in London, love you. Thank you for tolerating me at my most intolerable and no one deserves more credit and no one should be called out more than our glorious leader, our executive producer, the person who I believe is the secret of my success, Francine Watson. And I sincerely hope that this time next year, she is the one standing up here being recognized by the GPI. Um, it's truly an honor to be recognized by the GPI and the Hender Mob. Before I go, Joe did give me something to read. Um, I have four tickets for sale for Muse. <laughs> April 8th at T-Mobile. Floor seats. Cherry. Ever so slightly above face, get at me. Congrats, James. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Oh, yeah, congratulations. That's great. James wins. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I was fine with him winning, and then he walked up, and you see that little look back, and he raised the mic. <laughs> he really is such an uh, impressive model and consistency and performance. Somebody who I've looked up to for a while. So one more time for James Hardigan. <laughs> Not all breakouts happen on the felt. Some happen away from the table in the way of creating entertaining content for the poker community to enjoy. This year, a number of such individuals caught our attention. So here are the nominees for Rising Star in content creation. 
rising star in content creation, Natalie Bodie. Caitlin Komeski. Jesse Fullen. Lexi Gavin Mather. And the winner is Caitlin Komeski. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, first off, I want to thank Lucy Fullen for believing in me. Um, this was for you and our family. You're right. It is so cool that I won. <laughs> um, I want to thank my other fellow nominees for putting out consistent, great co uh, content all 2022. Natalie, Lexi, and Jesse, congrats on the great work that you did this year. <laughs> When I decided that I wanted to get back into content creation this year, I was really nervous to put myself out there and be vulnerable in that way. And there's a small handful of people that really pushed me off the cliff and gave me the faith in myself to do it. Those people are Jamin Burton, Andrew Nimi, <laughs> Christian Soto, and Poker Face Ash. I love you, Poker Face Ash. Uh, next, I would like to thank the 20 plus poker personalities that I impersonated. <laughs> thank you for being so generous. Like 99.9% .9 of y'all were more than fair and supportive and shared my content and I couldn't be here without y'all. Uh, I have to thank my muses, my absolute standouts, my recurring characters. First off, Doug Polk, who is doing a really great job in my hometown, pouring his heart and soul into the lodge. So thank you, Doug. I have a lot of respect for you. Um, Matt Berkey, thank you for constantly inspiring me by being the self-appointed Ben Shapiro of poker <laughs> ethics. <laughs> uh, by the way, while I have everyone's attention, can I get a follow back finally? I have a GPI award now, Matthew. Get your phone out, Melissa. Get his phone. Uh, I also want to shout out Joey Ingram, whose curiosity and passion for this community inspires all of us. Thank you for those 12 hour streams keeping me company. I was very single and I needed it. Thank you, Joey. Uh, Nick Vertucci, who welcomes me into his home and onto his show. Thank you, Nick, for introducing me to your beautiful family. And then finally, the first lady of poker herself, Robbie J. Liu, you are so gorgeous and charismatic and you've been more than kind and supportive and like truly thank you for letting me ride your coattails and share your shine with me. Thank you so much, Ravi. <laughs> Finally, I just want to thank my friends back home in Texas who lift me up every day. Um, Y'all better be watching this in the lodge right now or you're all dead to me. <laughs> Uh, and thank you to all the fans who shared and supported my content. I can't believe I'm still talking and on stage. These lights are so bright. Oh my God. Thank you for having me, GPI. <laughs> <laughs> all right, now it is time for the Fans' Choice Award for Poker Personality of the Year. Four superstars in the poker world. Here are the nominees. Fans Choice Poker Personality Ryan DePaulo Felipe Mojave Ramos Lex Veldhaus Ethan Yao Better get up here again, man. Rampage, Ethan Yao. <laughs> Who 
great. I can tie Steven, who's not here in the room, that, that we have two trophies now. It's perfect. <clears throat> On a more serious matter, it is uh, humbling that I get to be in the same category as three really prestigious people in poker. I mean, Lex, who's been leading the charge in content for since the very beginning. I think he like started it all. Felipe, who's been like the face of a whole country within poker. And, well, Ryan, who is sponsored by a rigged site. So <laughs> there's that. Anyways, this means a lot. <laughs> Appreciate everyone who voted back home. I mean, I wouldn't be here without you guys who support the channel and everything that I do. Like I said, I mean, if I could split this and somehow turn this into a million pieces, I would just distribute this to all 200 plus thousand of you guys. I will actually cut a piece if they allow me to and actually ship it out to one who is watching right now or subscribe to the channel. So if you're not here, if you're not subscribed, then I don't know what you're doing. Um, yeah, I will cut one of a piece of this trophy out. But yeah, it means a lot. I mean, the support's incredible. I'm glad that I can be a part of this industry and have a bunch of people support me behind my back. And this is a bank for everyone who watches and supports the channel. So there's that. Um, thanks, guys. This is for you guys. So back home. Man, if I hear like and subscribe one more time. <laughs> All right, here we go. Our main event. Last year's winner for this award mentioned sexual energy. When he was at the podium, you can probably guess who that is. It was Stapes. Here are the nominees for best podcast. Podcast. Only Friends Podcast. Poker in the Ears. Poker Go Podcast. The Chip Race Poker Podcast. And the winner is the Only Friends Podcast. All right. I came sort of prepared. I wrote this on the Uber over here. Uh, it feels fitting that on our one-year anniversary, we won what feels like a uh, attendance award. You know, you put 225 <laughs> of these out, they tend to give away a trophy. Thankfully, it's not a trophy in punctuality, as we missed the opening bit where I was going to get roasted by Melissa. So I appreciate that one. Um, thank you, huge thank you to Eric and the GPI Hendon Mob um, and PokerGo for putting this on. Obviously. I, like everybody else here, echo the sentiments that I think it's important to recognize people within the industry. Uh, to that note, I think that I want to give a huge nod to all of the people that are kind of moving the big pieces um, within our community. I think this year, more than ever in the past, I would say, uh, we saw a sweeping change where there was clear communication between the community, its players, the customer, the operators. Um, we saw everything from RTA to uh, you know public streams to anything that came to comfort at the table, whether it's uh, issues for females or, or anything along those lines of making people more comfortable. And never have we been more heard. So I don't know what part we played in that, how be it big or small, uh, that ultimately served a way big, bigger motivating factor for us than any likes or subscribers. Um, to, to my team, Andre, who's currently heading the Triton production, couldn't have done this without him. He's the brains behind the production. And to my man Guapo behind me, who learned everything on the fly, uh, keeping us in line and executing the job day in and day out. We certainly couldn't be here without him. Um, to Melissa and Christian, who couldn't be here, uh, huge thank you guys to getting this project off the ground. You guys were staples in uh, making sure that we were there day in and day out, particularly during the WSOP time when it was a real make or break moment for the podcast. Uh, I don't think Landon, myself, even Conrad, who were firing full schedules and playing day in, day out, would have would have made it without the support of you guys. 
Uh, lastly, to Landon, the tortoise, and Mr. Getting It Poppin' himself, Conrad Simpson. You guys show up, show out, day in and day out. Uh, there is absolutely no podcast without the three of you. Your personality that Yin's guys bring to the table, it's undeniable. So uh, on that, we're out of here. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for Tinder Tuesdays with Jeff Platt. He's going <laughs> to... He's going to be swiping on air. I mean, what more can we ask for? Thank you guys so much. Matt Berkey's first trophy since 2015. <laughs> and that will do it for us. What an incredible night. Thanks so much to our crew. Thanks to Drea Renee. Thanks to all of you at the studio for being here. Thanks to GPITHM for setting this all up. Thanks to you all at home for watching. We'll see you next year at the Global Poker Awards. Good night. Nice.